This is the new computer industry. Software is no longer programmed just by computer engineers. Software is programmed by computer engineers working with AI supercomputers. We have now reached the tipping point of accelerated computing. We have now reached the tipping point of generative AI. And we are so, so, so excited to be in full volume production of the H100. This is going to touch literally every single industry. Let's take a look at how H100 is produced. Let me show it to you. Whoosh. All right, this, I would, I would lift this, but I, I, um, I still have the rest of the keynote I would like to give. This is 60 pounds, 65 pounds. It takes robots to lift it, of course, and it takes robots to insert it because the insertion pressure is so high and has to be so perfect. This computer is $200,000. And as you know, it replaces an entire room of other computers. It's the world's single most expensive computer that you can say, the more you buy, the more you save. This is what a compute tray looks like. Even this is incredibly heavy. You see that? So this is the brand new H100 with the world's first computer that has a transformer engine in it. There are two fundamental transitions happening in the computer industry today. All of you are deep within it and you feel it. There are two fundamental trends. The first trend is because CPU scaling has ended. The ability to get 10 times more performance every five years has ended. The ability to get 10 times more performance every five years at the same cost is the reason why computers are so fast today. That trend has ended. It happened at exactly the time when a new way of doing software was discovered, deep learning. These two events came together and is driving computing today. Accelerated computing and generative AI. This way of doing software, this way of doing computation, is a reinvention from the ground up, and it's not easy. Accelerated computing has taken us nearly three decades to accomplish. Well, this is how accelerated computing works. This is accelerated computing used for large language models, basically the core of generative AI. This example is a $10 million server, and so $10 million gets you nearly 1,000 CPU servers, and to train to process this large language model takes 11 gigawatt hours, 11 gigawatt hours. Okay, and this is what happens when you accelerate this workload with accelerated computing. And so with $10 million, for a $10 million server, you buy 48 GPU servers. It's the reason why people say that GPU servers are so expensive. This is the new computer industry, software is no longer programmed just by computer engineers. Software is programmed by computer engineers working with AI supercomputers. These AI supercomputers are a new type of factory. It is very logical that a car industry has factories. They build things that you can see, cars. It is very logical that computer industry has computer factories. You build things that you can see, computers. In the future, every single major company will also have AI factories, and you will build and produce your company's intelligence. And it's a very sensible thing. We are intelligence producers already. It's just that the intelligence producers, the intelligence are people. In the future, we will be intelligence producers, artificial intelligence producers. And every single company will have factories, and the factories will be built this way using accelerated computing and artificial intelligence. We accelerated computer graphics by 1,000 times in five years. Moore's law is probably currently running at about two times. 1,000 times in five years. 1,000 times in five years is 1 million times in 10. We're doing the same thing in artificial intelligence. Now, the question is, what can you do when your computer is 1 million times faster? What would you do if your computer was 1 million times faster? Well. It turns out that we can now apply the instrument of our industry to so many different fields that were impossible before. This is the reason why everybody is so excited. Ladies and gentlemen, Grace Hopper is now in full production. This is Grace Hopper. Nearly 200 billion transistors in this computer. Oh, oh. 
蛮重的。Look at this. This is Grace Hopper. This this processor. This processor is really quite amazing. There are several characteristics about it. This is the world's first accelerated processor, accelerated computing processor that also has a giant memory. It has almost 600 gigabytes of memory that's coherent between the CPU and the GPU, and so the GPU can reference the memory, the CPU can rep reference the memory, and unnecessary any unnecessary copying back and forth could be avoided. The amazing amount of high-speed memory lets the GPU work on very very large data sets. This is a computer. This is not a chip. Practically, the entire computer is on here. All of the low. This is. Uh, uses low-power DDR memory, just like your cell phone, except this has been optimized and designed for high-resilience data center applications. So let me show you what we're going to do. So the first thing is, of course, we have the Grace Hopper Super Chip. Put that into a computer. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to connect eight of these together using NVLink. This is an NVLink switch. So eight of this, eight of this, connect into three switch trays into. Eight, eight Grace Hopper pod. These eight Grace Hopper pods, each one of the Grace Hoppers are connected to the other Grace Hopper at 900 gigabytes per second. Eight of them connected together as a pod, and then we connect 32 of them together with another layer of switches. And in order to build, in order to build this, 256 Grace Hopper super chips connected. Into one exaflops, one exaflops. You know that countries and nations have been working on exaflops computing, and just recently achieved it. I just talked about how we are going to extend the frontier of AI. Data centers all over the world, and all of them over the next decade will be recycled and re-engineered into. Accelerated data centers and generative AI-capable data centers, but there are so many different applications in so many different areas: scientific computing, data processing, cloud and video and graphics. We're going to expand AI into a new territory. If you look at the world's data centers, the data center is now the computer, and the network defines what that data center does. Largely, there are two types of data centers today. There's the data center that's used for hyperscale. Where you have application workloads of all different kinds, the number of CPUs, you, the number of GPUs you connect to it is relatively low. The number of tenants is very high. The workloads are loosely coupled, and you have another type of data center. They're like supercomputing data centers, AI supercomputers, where the workloads are tightly coupled. The number of tenants far fewer, and sometimes just one. Its purpose is high throughput. On very large computing problems, and so supercomputing centers and AI supercomputers, and the world's cloud, hyperscale cloud, are very different in nature. The ability for Ethernet to interconnect components of almost from anywhere is the reason why the world's internet was created. Today, there's only one software stack that is enterprise secure and enterprise grade. That software stack is CPU. And the reason for that is because, in order to, to be enterprise grade, it has to be enterprise secure, it has to be enterprise managed, and enterprise supported. Over 4,000 software packages is what it takes for people to use accelerated computing today in data processing, in training, in optimization, all the way to inference. This is a simple image processing application. If you were to do it on a CPU versus on a GPU running on enterprise、uh, NVIDIA AI Enterprise, you're getting 31. 0.8 images per minute, or basically 24 times the throughput, or you only pay 5% of the cost. This is really quite amazing. This is the benefit of accelerated computing in the cloud. But for many companies, enterprises, it's simply not possible unless I told you several things. I told you that we are going through two simultaneous computing industry transition: accelerated computing and generative AI. Two. This form of com computing is not like the traditional general-purpose computing. It is full stack. It is data center scale because the data center is the computer, and it is domain specific. For every domain that you want to go into, every industry you go into, you need to have the software stack. And if you have the software stack, 
then the utility, the utilization of your machine, the utilization of your computer will be high. So number two, it is full stack data scanner scale and domain specific. We are in full production of the engine of generative AI, and that is HGX H100. Meanwhile, this engine that's going to be used for AI factories will be scaled out using Grace Hopper, the engine that we created for the era of generative AI. We also took Grace Hopper, connected to 256 node NVLink, and created the largest GPU in the world, DGX GH200. We're trying to extend generative AI and accelerated computing in several different directions at the same time.